It has indeed paid off, my goodness, thankfully, Andrew from Cheetah Plains managed to find them. So, um, remember just a moment ago when we were in here, or maybe about 15 minutes ago, we were looking for birds and we were at the old hyena den. They were actually just slightly north of that. So, we were definitely on them. They must have just been behind us. But they're up and down, they were resting just for a moment. And there are a couple of youngsters here. I haven't seen all the lionesses though. I'm not sure exactly where they are. I'm just trying to figure out where these sub-adults are going to come out so we can have a look at them. I know they're sitting down in the long grass again. But we've got two lionesses to the other side, but it's just we don't have a great view of them yet. Let's see what we can do. I wonder if we go forward and maybe go from this angle, we might get a better view. We're just going to go through some trees very quickly. Sorry. Some guari branches. And then I'm going to turn and then we'll have a look at these lionesses on this side. Just making sure I don't drive over any other lions. Here we go. That's quite nice. Isn't that beautiful? So I think that's exactly what was going on last night. Remember, I was saying earlier that I think that the pride might be split up slightly. And that's why they were calling so much. We were looking for each other. Because it's just these two adults for the moment. And then all the cubs. So I don't know where the other three lionesses are. They might be somewhere around here. And we're not far from just on the other side of this drainage line. And I wonder if that's not what these lionesses have seen. But I did also hear some cracking of branches just off to the west of me. I don't know what that is. There definitely is something in the bushes that has caught their attention. So I'm just going to keep scanning just off to the left across the drainage line to see if there's anything moving around. It would be nice if they did find those warthogs because that one sow is awfully relaxed with the cars and I can only imagine that she, perhaps she's getting slightly older now and her senses aren't as acute as what they were and that would be a tasty meal for the warthogs. It would really just be a snack though with all of them. Hello beautiful girl, isn't that lovely? Now Ashes one, you said that these are pretty girls. They are indeed. I do think the Nkuhuma lionesses are quite attractive. They are very pretty and isn't this just beautiful framing? So remember, take lots of screenshots and hashtag Safari Live, share them with us. We love to see them, especially at this time of the year. This is my favorite time of the year to photograph lions in the golden grass with all the different colors of leaves in the background. It definitely is a photo photographer's dream. And the sun is just poking through the clouds every now and then. You can see how the light changes. But they're hungry. It doesn't look like they've managed to get anything to eat since we saw them last night, which is a bit sad. I always feel um, feel sorry for the lions at times. You can imagine they put in so much effort. They walked huge distances. There's so much pressure on for them to perform and to catch something. A water, uh, that water, you've said that George is only a snack. How's that <laughs> swapping everything around? Obviously, I meant to say George. You've said that a warthog would be a snack. It would indeed, like I said. It wouldn't be very much. It all just get a mouthful, especially if the other three lionesses are around here somewhere. But I don't know what she's looking at. I'm trying to stare into the distance. I can't see anything just yet, but my eyesight is nowhere near as acute as a lion's eyesight. Maybe some antelope lurking in the bushes too. It could really be anything. There was also a giraffe moving around here when I came, just came back around and into the sighting. So I don't know if it, that is what we can hear every now and then, the cracking of the branches as it pushes through the trees. And we have seen the Nkuhumas chase after giraffe before, but not make a successful kill though. Remember the youngest Nkuhuma, uh, we had a great sighting of them one day around Chele Pan, where we had all sorts of things. It was when I just started working here, and that young lioness went chasing after a big bull giraffe, but she wasn't successful, of course. I think she it was a big game of cat and mouse, really. Just looking, just to triple check to see if those other girls aren't around here. I wonder where they are.
Now, Chitty Chatty, maybe you're wondering if the lions in the Mara eat more often than the ones do here in the sands. In, I, I would actually say yes to that answer, purely just because of the abundance of game that's around at the moment with the, the migration happening. So the massive herds of wildebeest, the big herds of zebra, uh, warthogs and things that are around too. And, and of course the large herds of buffalo that are in that area for for most of the year. Uh, I think so. I think that there's more opportunity and they might not have as much coverage if you think about it in terms of little shrubs is the definitely a woody population of trees around here which does help for hunting but they've got the tall grass to hunt in in Kenya so they can completely conceal themselves and, and lions are specialists at creeping in long grass they actually don't need very much to cover themselves if you look at the pictures from yesterday a whole lot of you did take some really great screenshots and you shared them with all of us from our sighting on the sunset safari and they were just lying in a very short amount of grass and they completely disappeared so it is very easy for them. Uh, Archie, it's tough. Let I me mean, look at these girls. They've been walking all night. You sure, saw how excited they were when uh, they heard the kudu barking. They got up and they were you know, just about running in that direction. And, and, and just at the moment, there doesn't seem to be too much game around. We've see, seen lots of zebra tracks everywhere, but I haven't seen any zebra, but barring the two we had a brief visual of yesterday afternoon. So I don't know where they are. So until the buffalo come back, these lions are going to have a tough time. But she's excited by something. Something has definitely caught her attention. And, and when hunts happen, it's not necessarily something that happens within five minutes. It can take hours and hours of preparation. Now, John, you've just asked, what is she looking at? Your guess is as good as mine. I have absolutely no idea. Like I said, we're not too far away from where we saw the warthogs. If you were watching earlier, they were just on the other side of the drainage. So she could have spotted them quite far off. Maybe there's a Dacre or a Steenbok or a group of Impala also moving around. Uh, there could be a number of different things that she has spotted. But she's not necessarily making a move just yet. She's just observing. <laughs> not so eyelids of a lion uh, I think it is it's definitely beautiful and it's not just there to make them look gorgeous of course there's a special function for that and you see it with kudu as well and the antelope that like to live in the thicker bush is that they have those white markings on their faces and that white underneath the eyes actually helps bounce light straight back in so they can see it slightly better but look how she's constantly shuffling herself I, I love the movement that they do tucking her tail underneath her bum searching Look at her, it's so funny to see her do that. Come on girl, make a move. She has to be careful of course, and that's probably why she's so hesitant to get up and race on over. Because they've now been searching for the entire evening, and we know that they were moving during the day yesterday. Uh, because they started, they ended up uh, on Bivolzok, and then we got, they were found in the afternoon, quite early in the afternoon, on Torchwood. So they've been busy, so they must be hungry. So if she makes a sudden move she's going to, and gives away her position that'll be another potential hunt foiled and she'll have to keep waiting until later on today because they're bound to have a siesta they can't just keep going for ages see there how she's gone down now she's gone right hunger is getting to me obviously whatever she's spotted is perhaps moving closer but she's going to go off and give it a bash let's see where she goes now she's sneaking right behind that car look at that Actually, she looks like she might be using the car as coverage. <laughs> Watch it. Let's see if she's going to sneak out. So that's Andrew's car there. Let's see if she's going to pop out right behind it. And I've had lions do this before. It's actually not uncommon. Because we've been interacting with these big cats for such a long time in the Greater Kruger National Park, they're very comfortable around their cars. And I've had a lioness from the Southern Prides try and stalk a serval and she used my car as leverage. She didn't catch the serval, thankfully. She just chased it around. Where have you gone? I can't see her just yet. She's definitely there. I've just heard some squirrels also chirping off in the distance. I wonder if there's a squirrel that's sitting at the top of a tree and has maybe spotted these lions moving around. It's just like the monkeys. They've also got relatively good eyesight. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I can see her from underneath a car, but I don't know where she is. There she is. She's, she did come right past the car too. Sneaky girl. Right, I think we'll sit with these lions for a little bit long, not for a little bit longer, for as long as we can, of course. 
and uh, see what they get up to. But I'm going to send you back across to Ali to see how her herd of elephants are doing. We're going to try, so it seems as though the lions were looking at, at the giraffe that I was telling you about. Well, there's a lion just here. Just trying to get into a spot where we can see everything that's going on. You stay over there, girl. Let's pop our heads here. They are hungry. They are very lean. They're desperately looking for something to eat. But I think that they've realized that they're not going to win with that giraffe. And they shouldn't spend all of their time and all of their energy in trying to catch something that they're not necessarily experts at catching. Now, giraffe are not an easy animal to take down. And especially if you've never taken down a giraffe before, you really have to learn how to do this type of thing. There's definitely a technique about it, and there's lions in Namibia, which they follow, and they have studied them, and they have worked out how to catch giraffe successfully almost every single time that they make an attempt. It's the same thing as you see lions that specialize in hunting elephants, in, for example, in Zimbabwe. They're right here at the car. Hello, girl, but you can see... Their ribs just starting to show now. They're looking very lean. They're not going to starve though. These cats, the way that their digestive system is of course designed, is that they can go long periods without a meal. Now even if they were to catch something small like a warthog, it wouldn't be a meal wasted. Yes, it's not going to fill their bellies and they probably won't go into a food coma, but it will just sort of fill up those fat reserves, or the energy reserves, sorry, just to keep them going. Otherwise, as the days pass them, they're going to start using vital fat resources, which they don't want to do. They don't want to have to tap into those. They'd rather just keep topping them up and have a full belly every uh, so a few days or so, and then they'll be uh, okay. But it seems as though the whole pride is here. I've seen now all five lionesses are about, and the little ones in and amongst these thickets. I wonder what they're going to do now if they aren't going to just rest here. You can see big yawns. But I think they're slightly disappointed that they did not get a meal. Which is very, very sad. There's the other girl just coming past now. Now, Ashes, one, you're wondering what is the largest pride of lions that I've seen? Mm. I think the southern pride is pretty big. I'm trying to think. Oh no, I, I've, I've, I speak nonsense now. The southern pride is quite large now. I think when I saw them, there were five lionesses. There were a couple of cubs. I forget how big they were. But I have seen the shish pride um, in Kruger, uh, around Satara area. Uh, so I, I have seen them. I don't know how many members are in that pride, but I did see lots and lots of lions just laying about. But there were definitely way more than about 10 or 15 of them. There was a whole bunch of lions. And then I've, throughout the years, I've seen quite large prides in Kruger as I was younger, but I don't really remember too well. I just remember the sightings, and I wasn't a guide back then. And, and so I wasn't paying attention like I pay attention now. There's a pride, though. I think they're known as the Mountain Pride that hangs around uh, Singita, uh, Labombo. And that's a huge pride. That's a super pride of lions. I think at one point they had over 35 lions. There's also a white lion that hangs around in there. I'd like to see them. That would be an amazing um, pride to see. Um, but I'm thinking in the sands, it's probably the southern pride. Probably the biggest pride that I have seen. With the Charleston boys. Uh, let's try and figure out how we're going to get another spot in here. Um, also, I don't know where all the guides have gone. Everyone's just disappeared now. Uh, this is going to be tricky. And there's one lion there still coming through there. I'm just trying to find a gap. Because it's quite difficult to view them. They've tucked themselves in this sort of quarry thicket. Let's poke our nose here. Find a gap. Oh, hang on. My favorite little girl. I've just seen her. Hi, little precious. There she is. How's that view? Can you see that little lion just there? Oh, there we go. We've got the gap between the trees. She is, honestly, she's the cutest little girl I've ever seen. This is the one that's got the amber-colored eyes, and she used to have a floppy ear. She was attacked by mange severely uh, when, <clears throat> unfortunately, there was a bout of mange that was going around in the Nguhuma Pride, but they all seem to be very healthy now, and they've kicked that, which is great. But, um, she didn't look great at all for the first couple of months of her life. But now she's starting to look slightly better. And it was this left ear that was actually floppy. 
Hello, girl. You are so precious, aren't you? She has got beautiful eyes. Here comes, you can just see the shadow of another line looking up, going, hello, no, not interested, okay. <laughs> And that's another thing that I love to see, is that the cubs never get as much attention as they did when they were younger. It's like the novelty sort of wears off with the adults and they say, all right, thank goodness, no more harassing, no more trying to suckle, none of that nonsense goes on anymore. And I wonder if she's going to get up and go and join the rest. Give us a yawn. Oh, just a little one. She's just sitting out on her own. The others are just ahead of her. A little one. I think if I go further forward, I can get you actually maybe quite a nice gap of the rest of the pride. Let's try that. We'll just do lots of repositioning because it's a really tough gap now. <clears throat> but we have to make do. I think they're actually going to rest up here for most of the day now. There's some nice shade. It is cool because it's close to the drainage system. And I think that this is the end of the Ngooma's hunt, unless something walks towards them. And that could definitely happen during the day. You could have a group of impala move through here. Perhaps those warthogs cross the drainage system and come on this way. Or maybe a buffalo uh, heading towards Vuyatela Dam. We'll use this route and that will be a route where they will meet great danger in the form of lions. Here comes that little one going to join her siblings. All cuddling up now, giving each other grooming sessions. I see that's very important. Now, Ashes one, you're wondering if lions have a sort of home to go back to or if they just sleep anywhere. They really do just sort of sleep anywhere, unless it's a lioness and she has a den site. If she has got cubs, then she'll return to the same spot, but that den site also changes every so often. But now that these cubs are sub-adults, uh, they move around, they, they travel great distances. You see, the lionesses don't mark a territory. It's the males that mark and defend territories. The girls sort of just have a home range. So they move around within an area. They also don't want to go and, you know, travel too far out of the area that they've chosen to live in because they will have altercations with other prides and lions. They don't tolerate each other at all, even the girls. So they do hang around here. So they go into the Manuleti. They spend quite a bit of the summer months in the Manuleti. Uh, they, they spend time in Buffles Hook, Torchwood, Juma, Simbambili, Arethusa, around sort of here. Yes. Look how well equipped they are. They're able to use their tongues quite nicely now, grooming. And oh hi, Bacon. You said that they are growing up so quickly. They definitely are. Even just as we watch them groom, I remember the days where they didn't want to do any grooming themselves and mom had to give them a bath. And now they do it all, they help groom each other. They're not little cubs anymore, they turned into these lovely little lions. They are looking a little bit scruffy though, it doesn't look like they've had a good brush for quite some time. But I suppose that's what happens when you've spent most of yesterday afternoon and pretty much the entire morning searching for something to eat. Your coat probably does get a bit scruffy, but they'll sort that out. There we go. Clean those ears. Clean your siblings' ears. Get those places that are hard to reach. Now the only thing is that it's going to become quite tricky here, and there are some other guides that like to view lions, so I don't think we're going to be able to stay as long as we like, because for everybody to get a decent view is going to become virtually impossible now. And we have got one of the good spots. So we'll sit here for a couple more minutes. And then we will move out and give the other guides a chance. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a chat to tra Taxon and see if he can't get a view of these lines and if we can stay a bit longer. I'm going to send you across to Ali now. She's had great luck with the elephants today. I wonder what else is going to come her way.